a little correction to the thinking of certain people. I mentioned in a video the other day that a man I know spoke to me and we were chatting to and fro and he mentioned that he was a Christian Zionist, which is an interesting theological position. <laughs> Not that it was for me to sort him out, you understand, but never mind. And I, it occurred to me that an awful lot of professing Christians are as stupid today as the Jews are. And they have no darn right to be stupid. There is a simple principle today that we're in the new covenant. The old covenant ways of doing things are done away with completely. We don't, or haven't got replacement theology today, as uh, some people like to talk about. We have a new covenant. We're not replacement theology people, we are new covenant people. Replacement covenant people, if you like. The new covenant is as different from the old covenant as chalk and cheese, and they are as, it's no good you say, oh yes, but it's all bowl the covenant and the God, so therefore it's the same, the same way you say it's all white chalk and cheese, therefore it's the same. Give me a break. Please. The idea that you can breed Christians is common. I have seen Christian parents, people who were genuinely initially saved, take their children along to church, bring them up in church, and it's, it's everywhere, you've seen it too, of course you have. Bring them up in church, take them to Sunday school, educate them all about what the Bible says and really make them do this. Uh, you know, I've heard a number of stories and some recently of how children are being forced to uh, listen to or read Bible stories and stuff and have this, this really driven into them and punished if they didn't remember what they've been told and, and uh, what have you and really, really berated if they didn't accept it and believe it. You can't make the Lord's people like that. Please! In this covenant era, you cannot be born a Christian even if your parents were some of the godliest people from all time. You can't. We beget children from our flesh. Sin dwells in the flesh. Even godly parents produce sinners. The nature of Satan is conceived and born in children uh, just like it was in us, even if our parents were, were godly, godly people. Soundly born again, real Christians, narrow way folks. We do not produce Christians. Why on earth do you wish to try and Christianize your children? There is a couple I know who've got a couple of children who live across the other side of the country from me. The children are 14 and, no, uh, 13 and 16, I think they are now. And I've known them, well, I knew the man since before he was married, so you can understand I've known the children since they were a bump in their mum's tum, but they very wisely, if they're having a gathering of Christians in their house and whatever, they tend to send the children to their bedrooms. I've heard the children say, oh no, can we stay? And the dad said, no, you're not Christians yet. Go up to your room. Very good. Very good. Conversely, I have been in church gatherings, and you've, you've been here too, of course you have. Now, I'm soundly born again. I'm a baby in Christ, and I just really don't understand anything much at all. And... There I am loving God and I find that some parents have brought their children into the meetings. And if you've got spiritual people around and things that God is moving in the midst, you know, and God is speaking and ministering to people, the children start playing up. They start kicking and making up a fuss. They don't want to sit there. They're squirming and wriggling and making a noise and complaining and crying and, and all the other stuff. You've been there, haven't you? Why? Why? Because the spirit that they're of, what they're of, is of the devil. 
They can't help that. They were conceived and born there. We all were. But they ain't born again, are they? Why do Christian parents stupidly think that you can breed Christians or that you can bring up Christians? They say they believe in the grace of God one minute. They say, oh, yes, yes, we believe that, you know, everyone must be born again, etc. But here they are like a bunch of idiots trying to bring up their kids Christian and bang spiritual truth and whatever into their kids and trying to get them Christian by, by, by giving them sort of false fruit. In the previous video I spoke about the, it's the seed of the word of God going into good ground into God's people that produces the fruit. It's all of grace. God has to minister to us. God must speak into us. It's that word that sinks into us that does the word. Nothing work, nothing to do with us. The word, the seed produces the plant, the fruit. Nothing to do with you and me. We just have to be good ground and the seed soon finds out what kind of ground you are. However, why is it professed Christians and I'm not talking about the, the, the type 3, the nominal Christian. Why is it they immediately cast overboard the, the truths of Almighty God when it comes to dealing with their own children? You can't do that, friends. Sorry. That's downright wicked. Your children must be born again. And if God be pleased to speak into them, they will be. If their name is in the book of life, uh, from before the foundation of the world, at some time of their life, they will come to Jesus Christ. You may never see it while you're alive, but if their name is there, it'll come. You'll come. They'll come. One day they'll come. Whether they stay or not, after that, another issue entirely. Starting with the Lord does not imply you will continue with Him forever. But think about this. Why are you? And I hope you're not doing this. But if you are doing this, why are you doing it? Salvation is of God. He works it in whom he wants to work it, and he doesn't work it in everybody. You have to take the, to the truth that you hope your children will be saved at some time, but until they are, we don't bring them in amongst the gatherings of God's people. If you've got a family and you both wish to go to the meetings, the gatherings of God's people, you either get your children taken care of while you go to the meeting, or one of you stays back, the other goes to the meeting, and the next time there's a gathering, you do it the other way around. The first one stays at home and the second one goes to the meeting. We do not bring unsaved people into the camp. I don't care if they're darling little children. Satan can use children to disrupt church meetings every bit as much as he can uh, uh, use uh, unsaved adults. We don't bring unsaved people in the camp, sorry. If you brought someone unsaved into the camp, they're still a child of the devil and they will wreck the gathering of the meeting. And the meeting, they will. You know, you'll know about those things about all the way through scripture, about the leaven. If we get sin in the camp, it will work through the whole camp. The, like, like yeast works through a lump of dough. If you bring Satan's people in amongst the camp, into the camp, it will run through the camp and it will damage the spirituality of the local assembly, will damage the spiritual lives of the brethren. Is that what you want? Even if they're little darling little children, is that what you want? We cannot bring the standards of the things of God down to anyone, even if they're your own little darling children. Whoever they are. We don't modify the things of God for anyone. And I think a lot of this kind of breeding Christians thinking is getting people into this notion that somehow the Jews are special. That somehow the Jews um, are still God's people. It's just they haven't come in the New Covenant yet. That man I mentioned earlier on who spoke about being a Christian Zionist. Now that is a very, very interesting theological proposition. There ain't no such thing, pal. Sorry. The Jews believe that 
if you are of Jewish stock and a Jewish family, you are a Jew. You've been through the ceremonies, you've had circumcision, etc, etc. You've had your bar mitzvah, you've done all the other bits and pieces and you do all these ceremonies, you are a Jew, you're God's people. You cannot be born in this covenant era, you cannot be born one of God's people today. The new covenant replaces the old covenant. The Jews, as brother Paul speaks of, have been cut off. The Jews were broken off from the stock of Israel. Can I remind you, everybody, please, let's not be all sweet and sentimental here. Let's stick to truth, and truth hurts sometimes. All right. I mentioned uh, in another video about the Northern Kingdom, uh, how uh, the Northern Kingdom from Samaria was were carried off by the Assyrians because they got into appalling things. Well, you will know as well as I do that the Jews were doing dreadful things. And soon after the northern kingdom was carried away, the Jews were carried off to Babylon in two tranches. The Jews were doing dreadful, sick and wicked stuff, including burning their babies alive to Molech in the Valley of Tophet. Outside, just outside the walls of Jerusalem. I've mentioned before they had these like bowls of hot coals before this idol and some people say no the bowl was inside the belly of this idol and you threw the baby through the mouth of the idol and it dropped down inside but some said no it was just in front so whatever. It's academic isn't it? But nevertheless they were burning their babies alive to Molech. Molech a derivative like Baal, a derivative of Nimrod from his Babylonian pagan worship, okay. The Jews were doing appalling evil. And you'll know all the plagues and curses that came on them because of that. And the Lord lost patience with them. You'll know that it was prophesied in uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, that the Lord God was going to drive them out and scatter them amongst the nations and send a sort out, sword out after them until he destroyed them. All the promises he made to Israel were wiped, chop. He gave all these promises, but they were conditional if you will obey, if you will do this, that and the other. And the Jews went off to Babylon for 70 years and they rewarded God by inventing a whole religion while they were there basically a tradition of the elders, oral and written, called the Talmud. The Talmud contains filth, sick and wicked, filth contrary to the law of God, and that was what the writings which Jesus was burning the, the Jews for following uh, when he walked the earth. The Jews came back after 70 years, again in two tranches, a few thousand, not all of them by any means. It appears the vast majority of them went up into Europe. But whatever happened, they got there somehow. The Romans arrived in the land. And uh, you know what happened. And they were there when Jesus was born. To top it all, the Jews rejected their Messiah. And in AD 70, uh, 30, sorry, the Jews were, had him crucified. And you know, I don't need to tell you about that bit of the story. But that was the cherry on the cake. In AD 70, as prophesied, as Jesus himself prophesied, the Jews, Jerusalem was trashed by the Romans and the whole of the, the, whole of the area, all the people were there were destroyed and driven out and they fled. Only in relatively recent years have they gone back there in any numbers. However, the Jews rejected their Messiah and the scripture records they've been cut off from the stock of Israel. They can be grafted back in as scripture says as they, has he utterly cast them away? Well no he hasn't. There is an elect amongst the Jews as there is amongst the Gentiles. The Jews have to be born again if you're going to enter, the, enter Israel God's people and the Gentiles have to be born again if you're going to be enter into God's people Israel. Israel's a spiritual body now, not a physical group of people. You don't have a group of people who are natural born members of a group and natural born children of God, 
of a different covenant. That's garbage. Christian Zionism, come on. <sighs> Give me a break. The first disciples, of course, all our early brethren were all, uh, had to be born again. We're all born again. The first people in the upper room on the day of Pentecost were born again, 120 in that, in that upper room. They were the first people ever to be born again. But God has cut the Jews off. And I think this kind of church situation that we've got everywhere, where people are taking their children along to get them Christianized, you know, to, uh, you know, it comes from paganism. All that comes from Rome and all the rest of it. And that's what the Catholics do. But not amongst us, please. You don't try and Christianize anyone. Salvation is God, of God. He will speak to whom he wishes to. And as Jesus said, all that my Father gives me will come to me. We don't have to worry about that. Whoever he has decided to set his love upon will receive salvation. Whether they stay with him thereafter, that's another issue. You understand? However, why on earth are people trying to breed and or bring up Christians? Hey, eh? God must speak to people. You can't have preaching of the gospel amongst God's people. You'll never hear the preaching of the gospel in an assembly of God's people. They don't need to hear it. They're in the good of it already. You don't preach at God's people. That for which is for the unsaved, the gospel to the world, the things of God to God's people. Christian Zionism, oh, please, please. Jesus said, my kingdom's not of this world. The city of Zion now is a spiritual city for which they have no access. And only those of us who are born again belong to Zion. You can't have a physical people on a physical ground. Jesus said his kingdom was not built at this level. What the blue blazes are they doing? But Christians are trying to do the same thing, aren't they? Think about it. Well, we're just going to breed up these things. We're going to bring up all these people. And we'll have a Christian country. No, you won't. The United States, UK and other countries in the world, which have a, a large number of professing Christians in them, they're not Christian countries. There's no such thing on the planet. And there never will be. Never has been. Nonsense. Please. Let's, not, let's quit the breeding Christians program, shall we?